I said this before, I'm going to say it again. In the early days of hip hop, most artists thought they had to be a gangbanger or a dope dealer in order to get into the game. And now the strip game has um, has uh, has become uh, uh, an entry level position to get into the strip to uh, to generate the money to to get a demo. Cardi B proved that, or she, her, and Megan Thee Stallion proved that. Okay, yeah. So I'm not endorsing that because I I don't know if it should be, but if you're gonna do it, do it with a purpose. And I can't I, you know can't get mad at you, Doc. And it's the same thing. The pastor would tell your ass on Sunday. The pastor wouldn't give a damn where you got your money from as long as you put it in the damn collection plate. So it is what it is, folks. Not that I'm comparing the two because I don't want any strippers or, or our guests to, to get offended, but um, I feel the same way about prostitution. I mean, do it with the purpose, do your thing, and get out because there's nothing sadder than a prostitute who's been oh. hoeing for 20 years and still has nothing to show for it. Right. What do you, I'm curious, just in general, where, where, do you, where do you stand on prostitution? You know what? I ain't never bought no pussy, but I paid for a lot of it. Okay. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> I ain't never would hey, baby, give me a hit. Here go $100. Here go $100. Let me, let me do this thing to you. But no, nah, well, we got to go to dinner. Can we go to movies? Can we go to this? It's Salary, the same thing. Park. It's the same thing. Okay. It's the same. Well, uh, what, what I saw this other day in home, and in, in in it said, uh, it was on think of the YouTube, and it says the difference between a hot prostitute. Uh, the money and money and sex. The prostitute, you give the money to her to give it to you, and the wife, you give the money to her so she won't give it to nobody else. Okay, it's still gonna cost you either way. Okay, yep. it, the prostitute, you give it. She give her the money so that she'll give sex to you, and the girlfriend. I'm gonna say the girlfriend. You give her money or take her out, do things for her so that she won't give it to nobody else. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. Thank you to the chat. Shout out to the chat real quick. Hit that like button if you haven't hit it already. And if this is your first time joining the show and you like what you hear, please hit that subscribe button. Um, this past week, Lonzo, we had a big unfortunate event happen. And um, for, when it happened, I thought about you. I wanted to talk with you about it. Uh, I was old enough, I'm old enough, I should say, to remember the legacy of Jim Brown and what he did in the 90s in the streets and, and with the community and the inner cities and things like that. Um, but we unfortunately lost Jim Brown, football player, philanthropist, I mean, everything, just a great dude. Um, what, what do you remember about Jim Brown growing up? Can you, do you have any Jim Brown memories? Can you share talk yeah, to us about Jim him? Jim Brown was one of the bad football players in the 60s, dude, 60s and early 70s. He kicked ass with both feet. Then he, he quit. He quit. At like the height of his career, he started making movies. Okay. And he was, you know, he was he was that dude in the movies, man. You know, him and Jim Kelly. And, and back then you had a, a group of brothers. It was Kareem Abdul Jabbar, <clears throat> Jim Kelly, um, Jim Brown, and uh Bill Russell. I was a picture, I, I I never forget this picture. They were holding a press conference talking about uh black issues. And again, I was a youngster when it when it jumped off, but they were they they were these black figures and Muhammad Ali and Muhammad Ali was in all, he was a part of it also. And these black men were discussing black issues of that era. And they were always respected as being black entertainment leaders. Okay. Especially Kareem, especially Muhammad Ali, John and Jim Brown. These guys did a lot of stuff in the community. I mean, Jim Brown, he founded a nonprofit called America can, America can, um, America can, um, did, did a, um, he, he had a nonprofit and it was an anti gang program. Okay. In an anti gang program, I never went to his house, but he would invite gangbangers to his house to be a part of his program to teach them, uh, different skills. I think it was more like a conflict resolution. And a lot of cats went there and was successful, came out, came out successful in this program, man. So he took his he took his popularity, opened up his house, and created a program to help brothers get their shit together in the streets. You know, so this is this is the Jim Brown I remember. Okay, the Jim Brown movies, kicking ass, he kicked ass in every movie, and uh, always had the girl, always got the girl. If that that taco that taco meat on his chest, okay, had nappy the motherfucker. Okay, that, that's what I remember. Okay, so 
it is what it is, man. You know, uh, like my my uh, my boy, uh, 1968 says Jim Brown retired in 65, 58. 65 or 68, which one was it? Well, he, he, his, not, his name is 1968, so he ends everything. With oh, 1968. oh, my bad, 65, okay. So, yeah, I was a youngster when he retired, but I, re I remember, you know, folks talking about him. I remember seeing him on television back in the day because when you saw him on television, it usually was, it was a, a, press, a press conference that um, they were holding about some issues in the black community, something you'll probably never see again. Mm -hmm. Damn, Damn, dude, RIP to Jim, to Jim Brown. When I go, hopefully it's in 60 years, but when I go, I would love to be remembered like Jim Brown is remembered. Yeah, bad boy, man. You know, and like I can say he wasn't selfish, dude. I mean, when you open, you have a house in Hollywood Hills and you open it up to, to, to youngsters in the community to see how you live and to show, and give, to show them something different and create a program, get money and invite people up. You know, it, it is what it is. But I've also heard that some people who went to the house Jim wasn't there, of course. Got into a fight at his house, man. So I mean, damn, dude. You know, these are the kind of, these are the kind of things that makes it makes it very disheartening to to try and help people when people are too ignorant to try and see that you're trying to do something for them and bring that bullshit to your house or to, to your place of residence that you're trying to um and you're trying to help the community. Getting into fight at Jim's Brown, Jim Brown's house, man. That's a damn shame. The, the, uh, uh, my boy uh, Snoopy Eats has just brought, brought something to my attention over here. Uh, I, he was he was hilarious. I'm gonna get you sucked with that big toe. Uh, <laughs> that's a classic. Oh, like, come on, dude. I watch that shit all the time. I I'll be scrolling through the damn um, uh, to the uh, video channel, and I, if I see I'm gonna get you sucker, I'll throw it on just just for the hell of it. Cause that big toe, the the big toe scene, and um. What else? It was one more scene. That, the goldfish. The goldfish in the in 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 the, in the shoes. Okay, homeboy coming out of prison uh, with the goldfish in the shoes. Uh, uh, that was a whole different situation. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, man, that was a classic movie, dude. Shout out to the Wayans for for creating that. That man, that was such a good. You're right. Every time it comes on, I have to sit down and watch it. There's a there's a little known movie from Jim Brown that Jim Brown was in. Uh, it's from 1985, and it's called Crack House. Do you remember this movie, Lonzo? I'm no, curious. I did not. No. Okay. Nope. Not many people do. It was a very horrible movie, by the way. Jim Brown just happened to be in it, but it's a very horrible movie. And I think it was like a made-for-TV movie. But if you guys ever want to check out a horrible movie, it, it's called Crack House. It takes place in Los Angeles, and, and Jim Brown plays like this. You know, I was, drug dealer. I was at a meeting the other day um, talking about the uh, street takeovers. And I was telling him, I said, you know what? We may have to do some, uh, what's that Jim Brown movie when they fought all the gangbangers? Okay. Um, it was Someone help us in the uh, comments. Him, uh, Foxy Brown, uh, 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 my girl. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, damn, I'm having Super a brain. Fly. I love that movie. I love that yeah. movie. Hold on. Uh, they had to fight play vigilantes. Yeah, uh, they, they had I'll find it. And I, I know um, doing that shit can be a lot more dangerous these days, but it's I think at some point in time original gangsters, original gangsters. At some point in time, um, the adults in the room got to stand up to these kids. 